Hi, I'm John, and this is Up For Excel. And today, I'm gonna to show you how you can produce a sales forecast using just Excel trend lines and charts. I'll go through how you can use the trend lines to form a sales forecast within a spreadsheet, and then how to add seasonality to that so you can end up with an actual seasonal sales forecast like I'm showing you. Okay, let's get on with it. Firstly, we're going to generate the absolute numbers that go with that line. And then we're going to apply the seasonality to that line. So all that work's actually gonna be done on the Excel spreadsheet. But in order to do that, we need to know um, the form of that line. And to do that, we simply click, tick this box that says display equation on chart. This equation, I'm just going to again, expand this box because what we need to do is, not only do we need to make the equation larger because we want to see the numbers, but we also need to increase the number of decimal places on it. So we collect on the, uh, on the box with the equation in it. We go to here and we can format the number. So what we want to do is on the number and we want to push the crank the decimal places up to some kind of ridiculous value. So let's try 10. Yeah, I think we can probably go more than that. Let's try 15. Right, we're getting a lot of zeros at the end now. So we really don't need to go any further than that. I wouldn't have thought. And that's going to be our equation. And we're effectively going to use this equation in Excel. So I copy and paste it from here. So I'm just using control C there. And I'm going to just put it down here for the moment as the equation there. And then I'm going to move that chart slightly out of the way because we don't really need that right now. So I'm going to have to introduce a new uh, column here, which I'm going to call the forecast. Fairly straightforward. And, and I actually need as well an index you'll see at the moment because in this equation the letter x that you can see just here if i highlight it that is not a multiplication that is a letter x and it refers to the position on the x-axis so we need to create that a position number so the, this index column is just going to literally be one and then it's just going to increment by one all the way through uh, i'll center that so our forecast, we're now going to use part of this equation and this will be our X value. So to make this easier, I'm going to effectively put this equation into several different columns. So you can see we have our, our multiple and our power. And our multiple is this value here, which we can take to there. We don't need all those zeros on it and we'll put that as our multiple. Our power is the next value, which is that one. And we'll put that there. So our equation in the formula box now, in the forecast box, sorry, <laughs> is going to equal our multiple times by our index. So that is our 735865 times our x to the power of, which is the symbol there, and our power number. Okay. And I'm just going to give this forecast column the same formatting as my sales column for now. Right, now if we, we can just copy these all the way down like that. And now, and I can copy that all the way down and we now get a forecast for column. And we're not actually interested in the forecast back here, really. But what I'm now going to do is add that onto the chart to make sure that we've got the right number. So I'm going to select some more data. I'm going to add this series, which is going to be the forecast series. And it's I'm going to put it on like that. OK it. OK. And you can see that that is perfectly matching the trend line. So we've definitely got the equation correct. 
Now we need to apply some seasonality to this because we can't legitimately put that forward as a sensible forecast because we know that looking at the shape of the years, you know, Q4, for example, appears to be particularly high sales month and it would be daft to put some kind of even spread across the year forward as a sensible forecast. So we'll add seasonality. And there's numerous kind of ways of, of doing this. But one thing I could do is I'm going to add a calc column. I'll call it calc one, because we might need more than one of them, where I'm going to divide the forecast by the sales. I'll give us some kind of ratio of how accurate the forecast was to the sales. And I'm also going to rename this as forecast one. And I'm going to insert a column and call that forecast. Because actually I'm not going to call it forecast one, I'm going to call it forecast calc. Uh, I might just wrap that text there. So we have this ratio going on here. Now for the bottom four periods, I suggest that we take the average Q1 ratio and then multiply that by the forecast to give us a seasonally adjusted number. So the reason this is going to work or will give us some kind of idea is that what we're saying is that our trend line gives us in an accuracy in Q1, for example. Um, so in that case, it's slightly over exaggerated Q1. Here it's slightly over exaggerated Q1 and same here. So we know that chances are that this bar here for Q1 is over exaggerated, so we want to lower it. And we want to lower it by the average of the error on in the previous three quarter ones. So I'm just going to take an average. And I could do this manually by picking, holding down control and picking all the Q1 num numbers, which are those and hit enter, and that will give us our average. An alternative way of doing this is to use the average if formula. So we'll do average if. We need to pick our range that we're checking our criteria against, which is the quarter. So we want to average a particular quarter, and we'll fix that range by pushing F4. We'll then pick the quarter that we want to look for, which in this case is two. We won't fix that because when we copy and paste this formula down, we want it to pick up the very next one. And then wherever we want it to look for the average or average which numbers is these set here. So again, highlight that and fix them with F4. And there we go. Now that should give us the exact same result if we copy and paste that formula back on there. And yes, it does. So that proves it's working. So we now have our forecasted ratios. And just to show that they're forecast, I'm going to put them in uh, blue for now, just a different color so we can tell that's a different formula to that. So now in theory, because we divided, we divided the forecast by the sales, we need to divide the forecast by that calculation in order to get the sales. And I put that in the wrong place, haven't I? Right, so go so that divided by that. Now we know just to check, I need to just put this get that. We know that Q1, because when we eyeball it, we can see Q1 always came out slightly lower. We know we've got our formula the right way around anyway, because we're coming out with a slightly lower lower number. So I can drag that one down there. And then I now want to add that as a plot on the chart. We'll go back to the chart and see how it looks. Design, select some more data. We're going to now add a series. We'll call it forecast. And we're going to go all the way down there. OK, and while we're at it, we're going to um, I'm going to change this axis label to include the new quarters on the bottom as well. OK. So I've now put them back on the chart, but the key, and you can see that we now have some seasonality. So we have a high Q4, a relatively high Q3, slight dip from one to two. And to be honest, that dip from one to two, it only happens in 2019 and it happened quite dramatically. So 
you can see that we're now hedging our bets really because this is just the average profile if you like from the previous three years and because 2019 was such an outlier it's distorted it slightly so we've ended up with very similar values there but i think that looks all right we need to probably now just remove that i would say so i just highlighted that entire series and put it on because that was just checking the trend line you can see this trend line is no longer required either except that it can sometimes be worth just leaving it on there and extrapolating it further forward again so and just having a quick look so we'll go forward eight periods now and we could do this exact same calculation going forward for example if i wanted to do another year so I go 24 all these formulas are set up to, to pick this up i should be able to just go and do this like that and this forecast calc and the reason that's coming out zero of course is because i've hidden these numbers here so i just need to drag those down as well there and that's given us yet some more numbers if i go to the um sorry the design of the chart and select the data again i actually now could probably do something a bit more sensible and do something like that i oh, know maybe highlight that we'll take off that trend line now and that's a, a reasonable forecast that you've got there for sales and if you want to uh tart up that that chart a bit and get it looking you can get it looking something like this which is the one i prepared earlier i go for all this sort of techniques on a previous video of mine which is seven tips on for improving the appearance of charts and that incorporates probably about four or five of those tips to make it look like that and there you go a decent sales forecast